welcome to the FX 150 video manual. Today, we're going to discuss the features of, yeah, that's not the way I talk. Um, welcome to the FX 150 video manual. Today, I'm gonna to go over uh, all the ins and outs of the product, how to set it up, uh, some of the, the sort of advanced features, the front panel, all that kind of stuff. I'll try to cover as much as I can. There might be a couple little things that I forget along the way, but uh, we'll run through this thing and hopefully give you a better sense of how to use it. First things first, you're gonna take the unit out of the box and there'll be some other things in there with it. So you've got a manual, fold out thing. Um, that shows you how to connect the power supply, how to mount it on the mic stand and all that. Now I'm gonna talk about that anyway. Um, so I'm assuming that if you're watching the video manual, you may not have read that thing. There is a, what I consider quite comprehensive uh, reference manual also available online. So if you thought that the one in the box was the only one that you get, there is a reference manual available. There's tons of diagrams and things in there for how to hook things up in the various circumstances you might be in. So I really recommend that you go and check that thing out. Um, you'll find it on the support page for the FX150 product. I'll just chuck the link somewhere down here up there. I'm not sure where I'm gonna put it yet because I'm right in the middle of filming this thing. But uh, I'll check it on the screen here and then you guys can go and check that out. So other than that in the box, you've got your power supply. It's essentially the same as a laptop power supply. You've probably seen one before. So you've got the little connector that actually plugs into the back of the voice solo. So right down here, you can see I've got a little power connector. It literally just clips right in there like that, okay? And on the other side of it is where the power connects into the wall. So this will be your, um, they call it an IEC connector, but it's essentially the power cord, goes into here, a little three-prong dealie, and then on the other end is the plug that goes into your wall, and depending on which area of the world you live in, the prongs will look different. Hooray, okay. The last thing that you get in the box is this little thing. I'll try and put it down here as well, just to see if you can see it. Ooh, this little hat looking thing. So this little hat looking thing, which I'm going to now officially refer to it as, um, is what helps you mount FX150 vertically on a mic stand. So there's a few different ways, obviously, that you can mount this product depending on how you want to use it. I've got one over here that's actually mounted on a mic stand. Um, I'll just turn it around here. You can see how it just clips right in here into the mic stand. You got these two little grippy parts there on the back here. If you see it, you got little grippy bits and they hook into the mic stand as it goes down in there. So I've mounted it that way, but there are a couple of other options that you've got. You've got 90 degrees, so this is straight up and down. I'll just put it sideways to the camera there. You can see it straight up and down. That would be good for a tabletop use. So if I had a, a table that was kind of at ear level or maybe if I was up on a bit of a platform, uh, I could totally imagine that working really well at a wedding where you're passing the mic back and forth on that slightly elevated uh, you know, banquet table. Because um, these things are great for speaking through as well as playing music through. So just something to keep in mind if you've got a place where you want to present some speaking. Really good thing to take with you. A couple of the other angles we've got available here are the sort of 45 degree angle that shoots off in this direction. Then you've got one more tilt you can do like that that's a much more vertical orientation. So you can imagine that being at your feet when you're performing and it coming straight up at you from the base of the mic stand. Also a good location and, and place to have it. So the last way you can set it up is using this little hole down here at the bottom. Now that combined with the little hat thingy, little hat thingy screws on to the top of a mic stand. Reet, 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 insert cartoon sound effect. And then this thing simply slides right on top. And now you've got yourself a vertically mounted, pole mounted uh, speaker that can be up at ear level, which is really great. You know, if you're playing in a, like a little pub or something like that, and you've got your speakers either on the floor or down low, you're just shooting all of the treble right into their legs and it's gonna sound muffled and terrible no matter how good the speaker is. If you get the thing up at around ear level, above tables, that kind of thing, it will sound much better. The other advantage to this is that if you have a couple of these units, you can imagine another one huh, over here where this hand is being in stereo and actually having a stereo feel that you can present to your audience. So it's a really cool little feature. Don't lose the little hat thingy. <laughs> All right, so we've talked about connecting the power. I've got one now that's live, so I'm just gonna actually plug it in back here. And uh, the funny thing is, I have just realized that I've got the unit upside down like a complete pro. So as you know, you know I never make mistakes and I'm totally professional at doing this. Uh, I'm gonna plug this sucker in, there we go. And then on the back, just turn it around so you can see again, there's a little power button right here. So I'm just gonna push the power button, wait a couple of seconds, and up it comes. Now you'll notice that the lights all light up, that tells you that the unit is active, and then they actually dimmed out, you might have caught that there. When they dim, it basically means nothing is plugged in to the various uh, jacks on the back here. So I got my 
couple of combo jacks. A combo jack means that it can receive an XLR cable or a, a quarter inch or a TRS cable, which is more like uh, this kind of cable here. I'll hold it down. Where can I see it? There we go. It's always fun doing things into the camera when they're backwards and you're looking at yourself, but uh, good times all around. So you've got an XLR cable, otherwise known as a mic cable, and uh, if I plug one in in the back here, click it in there, it only goes in one way, and I turn the unit around, now you'll see that this strip of lights is actually brighter, and that's indicating that this channel is now active and that these controls would have an effect on the sound of what's coming into that channel. Typically that's going to be a mic that you plug in or a guitar, but it could be any instrument, any output that comes from an XLR or a, a quarter inch output be it TRS or uh, TS, tip sleeve or tip ring sleeve. So I'll unplug this one here and you'll see if I just quickly plug it into the other channel, now you see this middle one is lit up and the other one is not lit up, right? Gives you a good indication of what's going on. So you've got a couple of options on channel one. On channel one here, you can do, like I said, the XLR input, you can do a quarter inch input which goes right into the middle, so you can see it fits right into the same jack. And you can also connect a guitar in there and you may, if you're using an electric guitar, want to use high Z, which is a, a different impedance that works better with the pickups in an electric guitar. So there's this little teeny high Z button up here. And you just push that in for the high Z operation and you let it go for the regular operation. So if you had a mic or any kind of signal that's just a regular line level signal, you're gonna wanna have that button out, not pushed in. You plug in an electric guitar, you got your Strat, you got your Les Paul, plug that or push that sucker in like that. The other thing you might need to know right away is about phantom power. So you want to make sure that you know where the phantom button is right down at the bottom here. It says plus 48. You can push it in, push it out. Obviously in is on, out is off. Uh, you want to use that setting if you have a condenser microphone. Now often you're going to go out to a mixing board. You don't need the phantom power also turned on on the mixer. So I've got this little mixer here just for a couple of demonstration purposes later. You don't need that uh, phantom power on on the mixer. You just want to turn it on on the, on the uh, FX150 itself so that it provides phantom power to the mic. So that's essentially hooking it up. You've got one more little input down here. You've got a little aux input. That's going to be your eighth inch stereo input for things like your phone, your MP3 player, all that kind of stuff. And we'll talk about this uh, this through and the out later on um, as we go through operating the channels and what you're going to connect to. So imagine you've connected your mic. We'll go for the most simple setup right now. I'm just plugging in a single microphone. So I've gone around the back here. We've gone through that procedure plugged in my mic, rotated around, only fits in one way, there we go, got my mic, I'm singing into it. The first thing you're want, gonna wanna do is make sure your master volume is turned all the way down. This is the volume of the speaker, okay? So it doesn't affect the level that goes out to your mixer. So if I'm connecting a cable from this guy here to the mixer, and that's going out to a PA, the volume, the master here, doesn't affect that level at all. It's only how loud is this sucker, right? So what I'm hearing back myself. The level that does affect what goes out to this is right here. So any of these buttons, when you want to control any of this stuff here, it's, a, it's, it's exactly the same operation for every single control. You push the related button, so level turns blue, lets me know that it's now selected, and then I use this control knob, and you can see these LEDs around the top here. I'll try and flip this up a little bit. You can see these LEDs around the top that indicate the level. So as I'm using my microphone, I would turn that up, turn it down until I get kind of the, the, the mix that I want, the level that I want, and then I would use my master volume to affect how much comes out of the speaker. The next little button down here that you've got is vocal tone. So that's our really cool adaptive EQ, compression, DSing, gating. It's the make my mic sound better button. And typically when you're singing through a mic, you're gonna wanna have that on. Below that, you've got EQ controls. So there's two ways that the EQ can work. If you have vocal tone on, then these high, mid, and low controls, which work exactly the same way as the other controls, you press the button, it turns blue, you adjust it up and down, same with mid, same with low, exactly the same operation. When vocal tone is on, those buttons are kind of like a, an amendment to tone, so it's a little tweak to tone. It doesn't give you the full range of an, of an EQ that you would have if tone wasn't on, because we're sort of using tone to get you in the right ballpark to begin with, and you might say, I'd like just a little bit more mid, just a little bit more warmth, or I'd just like to roll off that bottom end just a little bit, add just a tiny bit of high end. That's where those controls will come in handy. If you want a wider control over the EQ and you don't want to use all of our adaptive stuff, which we always recommend, but you know, sometimes you want to turn it off, 
you turn vocal tone off. So you turn it off there, now you've got access to a different range of that high, mid, and low control. Essentially the range is broader and you can tweak more up and more down within those uh, controls right there. The controls are exactly the same for each channel. So just as I, you know, I've explained in the past, I think to people that these boards can look kind of daunting and then you realize that this one strip is just repeated over and over again. It's pretty much the same way that this sucker works as well. You've got your three different strips, all of those work exactly the same. You plug in your second channel, I'm gonna do that here, you'll see it light up. You might have all three channels uh, plugged in. I can do that for you here. Plug in these two, so you might have, you know, uh, vocal cancel on, or vocal tone, sorry, on one and not on another. Um, I'll pop it out of my channel one mode. There we go. So I might have vocal tone on one, but not on the other. Uh, um, all that kind of stuff. The last control that you have available to you here is vocal cancel on the auxiliary channel. The auxiliary channel being that eighth inch in your stereo mix from you know whatever uh, your your MP3 player that kind of thing. It does sum it down to mono because there's only one speaker here, so that's a, a mono uh, output. So it takes those two signals, sticks them together, so you can hear both sides, and then sticks that out the speaker. When you have voice cancel activated, it attempts to remove the vocal from that piece of music, and it, what it, you know, does some sort of trickery with the stereo image and things and tries to remove what's in the middle there. It's completely dependent on the stereo mix of the original track. So you'll find that on some tracks it works great and on other tracks it really doesn't work so well. Uh, for me, that some of the, the easiest, easiest examples would be, like if you had an old Beatles mix where all the vocals are on one side, it doesn't really have a stereo feel to kind of mess with and you may be less successful with that kind of removal. Or uh, with something really modern, you know, if you've got a modern sort of dancey pop kind of track where all the vocals are panned way hard out the outside, it'll be less successful than if you've got a vocal right down the middle. Um, but you can use that and, and kind of karaokeize uh, any of the tracks that you may have uh, in, your, uh, in your music player. Uh, the only other section on the front that we haven't covered here yet is the reverb. So exactly the same controls, you've got a level control, the amount of the reverb, and you can turn it up and down here, and of course, turning it all the way down turns it off. You've also got one for the second channel, right? So one for channel one, one for channel two, and then you have the style. Style is the type of reverb. Uh, if you don't know what reverb is, reverb is just simulation of a physical space. And think of it as I'm singing in the bathroom, I'm singing in a giant church, I'm singing in a padded cell, um, you know, which is where I sing most of the time. Um, it's, it's just adjusting the room and the size of the room, which means how long the reverb will, will go on for because that's what makes it sound like you're in a bigger or smaller space. So you'd select a style. That style is what we would call global. It applies to both of these channels. So that's the one case where this one button will actually affect multiple channels here, is that you choose that reverb style and then you select how much of it goes to each one of the channels. So in the case of maybe you're playing guitar and singing, you might want a little more or less guitar, uh, guitar reverb or more or less vocal reverb relative to the other one, and that's where you make that choice. That pretty much covers the front panel. Pretty straightforward to use. Just get in there and start mucking with those knobs until you get the sound that you're really looking for. So now we'll get into something that we would consider slightly more advanced. And one of the things that this unit is so great for doing is providing you with a more me type mix. So you're gonna be in a situation where you would like to listen to the monitor mix from a mixing board. And how that works, I'll try and scoot this out of the way here, just in, in case you're not familiar, what can happen with a, a board like this is that a bunch of signals come in to these inputs here, any of these inputs, and you've got these auxiliary sends, and essentially it's the ability to say, take some of what's on this channel and stick it out another input to go somewhere else. So in the case of monitors on stage, the sound engineer would, would, as you're requesting it, say, oh, this is your vocal channel, I want some vocals in my monitor. And then say, this is the bass. And they'd say, oh, I want some bass in my monitors. And they would turn it up and down to give you a mix. Now, what you do with an FX150 is you would take that auxiliary output. So on this particular um, mixer here, the auxiliary output comes out of the aux sends one and two right here. So I would take a, a TRS cable, um, the tip ring sleeve, and I would plug it into that and I would take a male XLR cable and I would plug that into channel two, channel two on the FX150 and I'll tell you why. So I'm gonna just plug this in over here, I'm gonna get that in, I'm gonna slip this mixer out of the way, bring this back in. Okay, so imagine you've got your microphone and you've connected it. You're going into channel one and you're singing. And 
you want to listen to the monitor mix that the front of house engineer is sending you and you also want to listen to yourself and you want to be able to balance those two things. Well, this is where channel one mode comes in really handy. So there's a little button down here that says full mix or channel one mode. Now, if you're playing guitar and singing or playing your instrument and singing or you have two microphones going into this thing and you just want to send the, the sound of the vocal tone and the sound of the reverb out to the PA, you don't want to do anything else with it, you want to be in full mix mode. That basically takes all three of those channels, channel one, channel two, and the aux, and sends whatever you hear out of this speaker here is going out to the PA. And it goes out through the, the single output that we've got right down here. Just connects a mic cable in there, just like this. Connect the cable in, goes out to the PA, plug into a channel there, I'll pop up my um, my mixer setup video. I did a Craig's Corner on mixer setup. It talks about doing gain staging between multiple devices. You probably want to take a look at that if you're unfamiliar with the process and it'll guide you through how to set these things up so they jive together in terms of level. But that would be a really basic setup. I might actually have my, my phone here playing some music in. I hear myself. The PA hears exactly what I hear through the speaker. Now, in the case of a monitor mix, things are a little bit different. You're going to hear back this monitor mix from the board, right? Well, you don't want the monitor mix to come out of the board, right? Go into the FX150, go back out of the FX150, and back into the board, and back out of the FX150, and now you've got a feedback loop. Definitely don't want that. So there's a little button down here that says Full Mix Channel 1. Push it in to be Channel 1 mode. And one of the things you'll notice happens immediately when you do that, and I'm just going to unplug some of these things that I'm, I'm dragging around. One of the things you'll notice immediately when you press that button is that the, um, the lights, oh, if I turn it off, that's probably less successful to show you what I'm trying to do. <laughs> um, there it is. You'll notice that the lights that are on this sucker change. So if I have full mix on, I can press vocal tone and it works. Does the, the adjustment of the tone, the microphone, all that kind of stuff. If I press channel one mode, you'll see that the, the reverb level and the vocal tone turn off. The reason for that is that in channel one mode, the only thing that gets sent out of the output, what we plugged in the PA to, this guy here, the only thing that gets sent out is the stuff that happens on channel one. So that would be your mic or, or your instrument. What's on channel two, of course, to not create that feedback loop can't go back to the mixer. We also are thinking that at this point, you process with vocal tone, you've processed with your EQ and your reverb. You don't want to add more of that to the incoming monitor mix. You just want to hear what's being sent from the auxiliary sends of the board back to your unit. So in that case, you have control over the level still, so you can, you can balance the level between what you hear in channel one and what you hear in channel two. You've still got some EQ control, so if things were a bit muddy or you know, a bit bassy or something like that, you could still turn those up and down and give it a little tweak there. Um, that's definitely a, a valuable control to have. And of course, you still have your, uh, your auxiliary input, but the auxiliary input no longer goes to the output. So you could still have music or maybe a click track or something like that playing through this, but it doesn't go back out. Um, so it's just be, be aware that that's the case. Now, when you're receiving a monitor mix, typically what you're going to want is a more me type mix. You're gonna take a mix from the board that either has none of you in it, so if you've got a, a microphone going in here and you're sending it out via channel, or via the output and you're processing channel one, you're either gonna have the, the front of house person send you nothing of you, like no vocal at all, and you'll control it completely with, with the, the first mix here. That would be if you had your own mix. Um, sometimes when you go to a, to a venue, everybody gets their own mix, and that's kind of the dream situation. Oftentimes there's only one mix or maybe two mixes. Um, you know, you as the, the, if you're the front person in the band, you might kind of pull the, uh, the trump card and say, I get my own mix and everyone else has to share one. Um, and hey, you know, all the power to you if you do that. Oftentimes there's only one monitor mix, and so what you're gonna to wanna to do is basically send an even mix of the entire band back to the monitor so that you have just the band, including yourself, because the other members of the band are also gonna be listening to that same mix. The key to more me is that you then balance that mix that does include you in it with your other channel that you can turn up and down relative to it, and that gives you the band and you, and you can have more me. And that's generally the situation that people find themselves in. They're like, I can hear everything else, I just want more of myself because they want to be able to pick out you know, the parts that they're singing and playing and all that kind of stuff. So that's a really good way to get the mix in. Now there's one more jack here on the back, and I'm just going to steal a cable here to, to show it to you, but there's one more jack on the back here that we should talk about, and that is the through. 
So if you imagine that you've got a signal coming in, right? So we're going from our auxiliary out of our, our board here. The aux end comes in, gives me my monitor mix. I've plugged in my mic. That gives me my more me, right? So I'm singing and I hear just enough of myself. I hear the band, everything sounds great. But I have other monitors on stage. Uh, maybe I have four or five of these suckers on stage and the whole band has them or a whole group at, at you know, a worship situation has them. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take the through here. You're gonna wanna plug in a cable to the through and run that cable to the input. And I'll just steal the, the back of this uh, other FX150 here. That's gonna go to channel two on the other FX150. You're still gonna wanna remember to put it into channel one mode the same way that I did on this one. And you could then daisy chain another one. The through goes to channel two, the through goes to channel two, and on and on and on. And you could put a whole ton of these things together. Every person then would have their own more me, and they would have their own monitor mix, which is really great, because then everybody's got, they're, they're working off a basic mix, and then each person is adjusting what they want. One of our developers uh, reminded me too, because he uses his in, in his church all the time, is that you might actually want more me to be your guitar. Um, this sometimes comes up when you've got a, a fairly large vocal mix. So if you've got a choir or something like that and you're singing a part in the choir, generally those mixes are fairly well matched. You know, people are using mic technique and all of that kind of stuff. And the thing you can't hear is that perhaps you're playing acoustic guitar along with the rest of the group. So you may want to use that channel one to process your guitar rather than to process your mic. And you'd want to just use the, your, your direct into the board for the mic uh, in order to make sure that you get a more me signal that you can do for guitar, you can tweak it up and down. So just a little tip there in case you're in a situation where that's more important than hearing a vocal. Uh, let's see, what else should we talk about? Um, that's pretty much it, you know. There's a couple of little advanced things in the manual um, that you can look at. Now I'm all connected all this up. Um, that you can take a look at. So there's things like input monitoring on uh, in channel one mode. So when you're in channel one mode, um, you can press and hold the level button and that actually gives you um, a VU meter style that changes color as you adjust the level here. So you can, you can actually see it and it will peak out red if it's, uh, if it's too hot, if too loud. Um, when you're not in channel one mode and you, and you are in the full mix mode, the vocal tone button will light up red if you've turned up this level too much. So if it's really, really loud and you're seeing the vocal cancel button or the vocal tone button here lighting up red, that means that you've got too much signal and you need to turn down this level. So that's a little bit of an advanced feature. You may see it popping red and you kind of wonder what's going on. It just means your level is too, too high. You'd want to turn that down a bit and then of course things get turned down. You then want to turn up your master in order to make it louder. There are a lot of different ways that you can use the FX150 and like I said, from spoken word, in the office, addressing some people, to at a wedding, to playing a gig with the thing, to connecting a whole bunch of these on stage for people to have their own monitor mixes. It's really, really great that you can use these things in so many situations. Lastly, let's talk about using the aux for one more purpose. You could take the headphone out from a TC Helicon unit or any unit that has a stereo out with a headphone out and plug that into the aux input. So if you wanted to go into say a Voice Live 3 and then go stereo out of the Voice Live 3 into this and then also send say all four channels of the Voice Live 3, you know, the stereo vocals and the stereo guitar out to the mixer, you could actually do that by simply just plugging the one single cable into the auxiliary input here on the back and then you just have your own mix right there and you could still use channel two as your aux, or as your uh, your more me input for the monitor mix but you'd be able to send then discrete channels out to the the front of house and still have that more me situation so think of that as well if you've got one of those stereo uh, stereo output devices all right well i think that just about covers it thanks so much for hanging with me here and uh, if you've got any questions make sure to check out our forums you got support.tc-helicon.com forums that will get you to where i hang out and some of our other support guys and a bunch of our really cool users uh, all a really great community and you can also check out of course the manuals and things online that i posted those links earlier okay take care